Everybody has those times where they think about everything in a matter of two seconds. You're gonna have to go through obstacles no matter what. Things happen for a reason. It made me who I am. Growing up in Boca Raton, Florida, the first seven years of Gio Bernard's life were picture perfect. His parents both ran a dry cleaning service which provided a house, a big yard, and even a swimming pool. Happiness was his best friend, heartache was a stranger, until that fateful day in 2001. It still gives me chills to this day. I was walking in, we were just getting back from school, she came and picked us up. Um, and I saw my mom on the ground. You know, I yelled to my brother, my brother was the one holding her. Um, called 911. I don't remember verbatim, but I mean, I'm sure it was in that, in that, you know, in that premise of, you know, my mom's on the ground, just come help. That afternoon, at only 34 years of age, Josette Bernard lost her two-year battle with thyroid cancer. Gio's father was devastated. Prosperity quickly morphed into poverty. When she passed away, I just dropped dead. I just dropped, you know, and I, I even, you know, lost my home, and I, uh, you know, I, I lost my business. It's just like, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do. You talked about your dad being your Superman. What was that like for you to see your dad? I, I, I'm assuming that you had never seen him nah. like that before. Nah, I don't see my dad cry. I've seen her cry one other time other than that time in my entire life. To see him on the ground, to see my brother on the ground, you know, just crying, just, we're just all holding each other. It's tough. I'm the kind of guy who's living for my kids, you know, so when you cannot give them what they need, it's hard, but thanks God, you know, I find, you know, neighbor, you give me help, you know, so I survive. Two years later, on a local Pop Warner field, Yevin found that helping hand in two of the surest hands in NFL history, Hall of Fame wide receiver Chris Carter. I was just out there watching my son, you know, join a little league football um, program, and everybody was ranting and raving about this kid. They called him um, Gio. You know, it's like, Giovanni Bernard, have you ever seen him, you ever heard about him? I was like, no. I remember seeing him, you know, everybody was saying, oh, you know, that's, you know, that's Chris Carter, you know, that's, that's the Hall of Famer, you know, or soon to be Hall of Famer. And, you know, everybody's trying to show off for, you know, the pro player. Uh, I was out there trying to, you know, juke everybody out, whatever it may have been. And then, you know, the relationship just, you know, grew together and he almost just basically took me in. I opened up my house to him. Um, we were at practice on a Friday and I asked him, you know, did he, did he want to come over? I asked him on Thursday, did you want to come over on Friday, spend the night, we'll go to a high school football game then we'll play our game on Saturday. And after I started asking him that, he would show up every Friday with his backpack. You know, I needed this, these resources, that, you know, I needed a good home, uh, I needed food every single day, you know, to do what I had to do. And it, it's crazy how everything kind of worked out, uh, you know, from a you know, point where, okay, that's him, to now, you know, I look at him as, you know, like, almost like a father figure to me. It took over on Joe's uh, uh, needs. So like, give him transportation, you know, give him what he really, really need. And then without Coach Carter, I don't know how you can, you know, you never be where he is. I didn't ever stop saying thank you to him. Over the next few years, two families became one, with Yevon leaning on Carter for all football matters. It became critical when he had to decide where he was going to go to high school. And his dad said, Coach Carter, we listen to you. I do whatever I have to do. My recommendation would be for him to move to Fort Lauderdale and for Gio to go to St. Thomas. You know, and that's basically 30 miles away. And he moved into an apartment that, you know, wasn't livable. Which apartment was yours? It was A, right there. From what I read, inside your apartment, ceiling was kind of collapsing. Mm -hmm. There were rats inside. Yeah, I mean, there's a point. I mean, the, the bathroom was the worst. I mean, it, was, it really was really bad. You know, it's like a reminder for me, to, you know, where I came from, what I had to go through. We just like day and night. So it's not easy at all. We cry. Sometimes I, I cry blood. When I was living there, I cried blood, you know, and I don't know how I survived. But that was really tough for my son, Gio. Despite the living conditions, Gio flourished under Carter's guidance and led St. Thomas to back-to-back -back state championships. Here goes Gio Bernard, St. Thomas Aquinas. 
has won the state championship. What memory stands out most on this field? Getting yelled at here and there, practicing spring ball. I mean, just the whole nine yards. Who was doing the yelling? This, guy this right man? I'm tell hey, if y'all don't see him on the sideline, he's up there in the press box yelling. <laughs> saying what? From up there, you can hear him from up there. It was just like watching the painting and you see someone who's painting a great painting and you don't know the end, but you know it's gonna be good. Good enough to be recruited by nearly every major college. He chose North Carolina, where he racked up 33 touchdowns in two seasons before leaving school early for the NFL. In his rookie season, Gio scored eight touchdowns. And even as he sprints to a brighter future, his past is never far behind. I have to look at how much I've you know, endured throughout my life and uh, to continue to keep striving. There's so many things out there that, you know, when that happened that I learned from it. And maybe not at that exact second, um, but throughout life, you know, understanding, you know, how precious life really is.